YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over like two or three ways that you can use photos or stills from your music videos to kind of do a transition that's pretty simple, easy, but still looks really good. If you notice, there's a totally different location. I'm actually out in LA at the Splitvine house. We got my boy Q somewhere back there. I think he's cooking some food. But yeah, now I'm gonna be out in LA. So this is gonna be the scenery you're gonna be seeing most of the time when I do videos. I did post a vlog. So if you guys haven't seen that, go check that out. Definitely give my vlogs a chance. There's some really cool like industry side stuff that uh, we're gonna be doing. Like we just had a session with Jazz Cartier, if you guys know who that is. Quentin actually got a song with him. A lot of different things that you guys could be interested in if you guys edit music videos or direct music videos or you're just in that realm of content. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe because like I said, we do do a lot of that vlog stuff. We're gonna be doing more tutorials, just a bunch of stuff in the visual creative side of the hip hop scene. Be sure to like and comment as well as follow me on Instagram and all the social medias. I'll have them linked below. Also, my 10K subscriber editing contest has ended. Crazy to say that ending with, I think today I had 23,000 subscribers. So that's absolutely absurd. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'm gonna be actually going live on Twitch right after I record this video. So if you're watching this video, you already missed it, but I'm gonna be judging all of them, not doing the official announcement video who won until I think Keenan's coming out here like sometime this week or next week. So I'll probably hold off on the announcement until he's out there so we can do it in person. Uh, I just think that'd be pretty cool. If you wanna support the channel even more, you can go over to briandelmata.com, check out my texture pack. It helps you get those paper rip effects and transitions, uh, music videos from Aug and Lone Wolf. It really helps support the channel as well as you guys get some really cool digital assets. So if you're interested in that, I'll have a link to a playlist of all the tutorials that I have on that below as well as the website. All right, let's hop into the video. All right, so another one premiere. What I went ahead and did is I just took screenshots from the video themselves, just screen grabbed. So if you want, you can go ahead and click this little picture button if you see a frame that you like. And what that's gonna do is export a frame or you can click Control Shift E as a shortcut. You can also do with photos. It doesn't really matter too much, but I just think it's easier to do with frames from your video. That way you don't have to plan anything while you're shooting. So I already went ahead and took a bunch of screenshots. I think it's good to have anywhere from like three to like maybe six different uh, images or stills or pictures or whatever you wanna use. It's not really necessary in a certain number that you need, but I, th I found anywhere from like three to five is probably the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and do is just show you three different ways you can tweak the frames just to make them a little bit more interesting than just stills. So for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw like an outline over our subject. I think that's a pretty cool way of just differentiating the still from just being a normal picture. I'm gonna be using some kind of brush. I already have this Kyle paintbrush scratch bristle brush selected from the mega pack. I'll have it linked below. It's free for all Adobe users. So yeah, I just created a new layer over our image. That way, if you mess up or whatever, you end up not liking it, you can just delete it. And then I just chose like a white color and I'm just gonna outline a little Dirk here. I think it looks cool if you're a little like rough with it, like sketchy. You can go super precise or whatever, whatever your style, but this is what I'm gonna do for it. And then I'm just going ahead and outlining him and then his watch over here as well. And then I think I'm also gonna go into my paper texture pack and just drag on uh, one of these black scratches here just to have a little bit of a paper look and then just make sure you drag that below the layer one. Let me go ahead and go to screen and then also go to image adjustments and I'm gonna turn down the saturation of it. So it's just like a black and white piece of paper. And then go ahead and save that one. I'm probably gonna do four separate ones for the sake of tutorial. So I'm dragging another one. This one I'm gonna actually cut out our subject. I'm just gonna do a real rough job using the polygon tool. You can go ahead and use the pen tool, make it a little bit precise, but the effect I'm gonna be doing on this actually doesn't matter too much if you're precise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click Control J as soon as you outlined it, and then you can see you have your subject masked out. Then again, going into the paper texture pack, I'm just gonna choose some kind of paper that I want. I think I'm gonna use this grid one. I think it looks pretty cool. Just scale it up so it fills out the whole subject. Control click your subject and then click Control J on the image itself. So they're exactly the same uh, size. Like they're, it's basically a cutout, but just a paper. And then I'm gonna scale that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my tape pack actually, reflective tape here and drag that on above our subject and just kind of line it up like it would be uh, taping on the subject behind something. And then make sure if you save this one, cause it's gonna be going over another image, make sure to save it as a PNG. That's gonna allow the transparent background. Drag it in our next image, some things you can do just to make them different. I'm just trying to give as many examples of like the freeze frame and what you can do to the image to make it look different. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag up some grain or some noise, go ahead and click filter, add noise. I'm gonna make it monochromatic for this one. Also gonna go ahead and go to image adjustments and just turn down saturation. I know I've seen people do this before. I think it looks pretty cool. And then I think I'm also just gonna add and for that one, honestly, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, you can obviously combine all these, like you could go ahead and draw or you can go ahead and make a cutout with the black and white one. Like I said, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm just trying to give examples of different ways to tweak the freeze frame so it's not just an image. 
Then I go ahead and open one last one. And for this one, I'll just do a simple, kind of like the last one, but instead I'm just gonna drag a paper texture on, maybe this crumple one here. Go ahead and scale it up, turn it to screen. And then I'm also just gonna turn the hue and saturation on the black paper overlay, as well as image itself. And then I'm gonna go to image, I'm gonna go to image adjustments, photo filter on the image itself, and then pick like a brown color or something, and then save that one. And then going into Premiere, the way I like using this effect is actually just as like a little transition before like the beat drops or something or the artist starts coming in. Obviously we don't have audio here, so I kind of marked out where it actually is in the song. And then I'm gonna go ahead and if you're working on a 24 frame per second timeline, I think I'm gonna make each of these four frames. I feel like that just looks good when it's four frames long. So I'm gonna go and drag all of them in, make them four frames. And since there's one with a transparent background, you're gonna have to overlay that over another image. I'll show you that in a second. But right now I'm just making them all four frames, so it works. And then I have it marked where the beat drops. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag those over here. And you can also see how the image is moving in the background with the overlay. So that's what I was saying. You just got to elongate one of the images. So it comes in like that. But I'm going to have the two black ones play and then the two colored ones play. So I'm just going to tweak the order of it. And then I just made the colored one play with Dirk and then had the subject pop up above that. You can see how that's a pretty cool transition. Obviously, it looks a little weird because I used so many different methods in this one transition. If you were to keep a consistent theme, it would look a lot better. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the effect. I know I've done something similar like this in the past, but I just kind of wanted to do a quick video showcasing a few other ways you can tweak still images to make them look like a cool transition in your video. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help push my content to other people that want to see my videos like music video directors and editors. Like I said, I just finished the 10K subscriber editing contest. I actually already reviewed submissions, but I'm going to be waiting for Keenan to fly out here to LA to judge them, and we're going to make a video in person. If you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to briandelmata.com, check out my texture pack. The link will be in the description. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.